This week on Barbell Shrug, we talk about how not to look like this when you do weightlifting. Welcome to Barbell Shrugged. I'm Mike Bledsoe here with Doug Larson and Chris Moore. Hello. We brought on Alex Macklin as our guest. Hey, What's Mac. up? What's Al up? Alex Macklin. Hey, uh, Mac. You may know him if you're in the six-month muscle gain challenge. If you're not, you may not know him. Uh, he's been on a couple of episodes, though. And today we're going to be talking about uh, common mistakes that we see, uh, well, things we see in the gym and things we see in the six-month muscle gain when we're looking at weightlifting. Alex is a fantastic weightlifter, and he coaches our Weightlifting 101 class at Faction. And uh, he also monitors the, uh, the Facebook forums that uh, people are in for the six-month muscle gain. So he's constantly seeing uh, common problems and, and helping guys out. Uh, via video and pictures and stuff like that. Uh, so we to add some perspective to that, for people that aren't in that program, basically the way it works is uh, all the guys in that six month program get a workout sent to them every single day along with some videos that show them what to do. And then they are all part of a Facebook group and in that group they can submit videos of them doing their lifts and then uh, us as the coaches will go in there and tell them what they're doing wrong. You know, keep your heels down, better posture, better first pull. And we'll, we'll go in there and coach the guys through the videos that they submit. And Alex is one of the coaches that goes in there and helps with the weightlifting specifically. So. Uh, just to add some context so everyone knows kind of what we're talking about here. What are we trying to figure out? Let's make sure it's recorded. Is it recording? Was it being Chris Moore is over here making hand signals. I couldn't, no, I couldn't see. The he, little, a, he was like, uh, what do I do with my hands? No, man. looked like he had a big question on his face. No, man. Let me use my hippie voice to explain to you what's going on, man. <laughs> it was all stretched in. I couldn't see the little waveforms. Stretched I was like, Shit, in. We're not even. Stretched in. It was everything stre stretched in. Yeah, okay. So uh, in Next. the room, we also have uh, Mr. Dave Ferguson in the background. He is here as my beard bodyguard. Uh, Anyone touches the beard, Dave takes him out. That's right. <laughs> Farm bar. The beard's coming the, off. The beard, the beard is coming off soon. We got 100 uh, shares some, on the some video. People, some people are a little more aggressive about it than are I Are you going to do it for real? Yeah, I'm going to shave this off. I mean, I said I would. I have can to. Can I, can I recommend I something? You said, did you define what shave meant? <clears throat> no, no. Okay. Okay. Well, that could be... I recommend you could do you could do a goatee. It's a little nineties. You could trim it down to do like a little sculptured, low profile thing. I'm just gonna shave it and go back. You to go. I figured we were gonna go through phases. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go through zero. I'm, I'm gonna go to zero and then bring it back to that. I don't, man, I don't think you should. Civil War Burnside type thing. You know? I thought you were gonna go to like big goatee and, and pork chops and then and yeah. then down to the mustache yeah. and then, do and then down to nothing. I could, I, could do do for, I could do goatee and chops for a day and then I could do chops and mustache for a day. <laughs> And then, yeah, we I just, just don't yeah, think no, you no should sense go, wasting all that. I don't think you should just go down the perfectly baby face skin, man. That's going to be quite. I, I won't be able to look at you for two weeks, probably, as you grow <laughs> two, some. Two, three weeks, yeah. Huh? It's tough to look. You change. Yeah. You're like a child, man. All right, let's get on topic. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, today we're talking about common weightlifting mistakes. And uh, why, why do we want to fix these problems, Alex? <laughs> why, why would anyone want to work on their weightlifting? It's the biggest Educators. socially troubling yeah. phenomenon in our society today. I mean, well, obvious. <laughs> Besides I mean, Ben Affleck being <laughs> Batman, of fuck. course. Don't even bring that up here. <laughs> Save that for the end. Um, well, obviously, I mean, you want to be a better, you want to be a better weightlifter. You do, if you do weightlifting, you want to be as good as you can. You want to reach your pop, your, your maximum potential. Um, I mean, you want to be able to do your maximum loads. Mm -hmm. um, safety reasons. You know, you don't want to hurt your back. You yeah, look, you want to look um, cool in front of yeah, if you attractive better, better ladies technique, too. Better right. technique is injury, safer injury prevention. Yeah, exactly. You have better techniques. So you have better leverage, so you can lift heavier, heavier weight, and so you're going to be able to PR. Right. Just by improving your technique alone, independent of getting stronger. Right. right. Yep. And I mean, if you're uh, if you're a serious or even just you know just occasional CrossFit competitive athlete. You know, if you have better technique, you will be better at doing these wads. I mean, almost every wad in the games or any kind of CrossFit competition involves you doing some kind of barbell movement with, 
you know, uh, clean and jerks or snatches. So if mm-hmm. you are able to move that bar more efficiently, have better technique, you're mm-hmm. going to move faster, you're going to get through the wad faster, and you're going to have better time, and you're probably going to end up on the podium. Yeah, better technique means more efficient, and more efficient means you're spending less energy per rep, right. which means you can do more reps faster. That's the whole point of the sport of CrossFit, more work and less time, and better technique makes it where you spend less energy per rep so you can go faster. Absolutely. I would probably say, everybody, keep in mind, there's a balancing thing, because somebody's like, oh yeah, then how come Kendrick did three minute blah, 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 blah on the thing technique plus you being fit already will equal you being less tired right yeah you, well, you still have to like be in really good condition for that, spe- for that specific event and Kendrick is not training for 30 yeah, right. reps of 135 and he still did it all. in three minutes which is still impressive for well, his every rep looked like every other rep which right. is pretty fantastic right yeah. if Kendrick so dedicated some training time to that specific event he could he could cut his time down by like a third. What I wanted like to do, he, he was could just, probably do like a minute ten. Yeah, he could, with two he months could do training. It, he could do it in a mo- I think in a month he could get down to a minute. I don't think that'd be <laughs> just snipping that red wire. I don't wire. think that'd be crazy. Well, yeah. snipping that red wire so the trolls. That's one less bomb for the trolls to throw in the YouTube comments. <laughs> like, oh yeah, oh yeah, dude. Technique's so important. How come blah blah? <laughs> Go away. Let one less thing to talk about. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> all right, so we have, we have all these different mobility mistakes, which we haven't really mentioned yet. But Mobility mistakes. Or excuse me. What's that, a mobility that's, mistake? That, 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 that's the first thing that we're going to use to fix it. It's we have all these fault. different weightlifting technique mistakes, um, and there, there's a million ways to um, why you might have a mobility I keep getting focused on mobility. I'm the mobility guy. I think. <laughs> well, that's the first point. Yeah, I'm going to take up. over real quick. <laughs> yeah. Just shut up, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I think one problem we see is people end up not knowing that they're as bad off as they are. Because, say, they're the best in their gym. Right. Or they're the best. Or, or they're the best in their garage, you know, which is maybe or they just work by out themselves. Population or one. they work out right. by themselves. Po- population exactly. one, they're yeah. the best. Um, they don't know. But they don't realize all the things they're doing wrong. They feel like they're doing better. A lot of times they think, oh, I just need to get stronger. I need to get right. a bigger front squat so I can clean more. And I, I see most often people come into the, the six-month muscle gain and we go, oh, you should try this. And we're like, oh, I didn't know I was supposed to do that. And then all of a sudden things get faster and easier. Yeah. And it's like, oh, you know, life just got better, and all I had to do was practice this thing for a week, and now the bar's moving faster. I, I hit this big PR, mm-hmm. and it Amazing wasn't exactly happens. a strength thing. It was a, you know, you just cleaned up your technique, and all of a sudden, things got faster and easier. So in the six-month muscle gain challenge or the, the weightlifting course that you teach at Faction, what's probably the, the number one thing that comes to mind as far as bad technique? What, do you, what are you constantly fixing over and over and over again? Uh, definitely not finishing the pull. Now, that's kind of vague and broad because but mm-hmm. basically not getting not standing all the way up and getting the hips underneath the bar to in that, get in that jumping position where you can explode upward um, a lot of people will tend to try to rush that pull and mm-hmm. so they'll they'll try to get the hips really forward really quickly and <clears throat> and they don't finish their pull and so the bar is out in front and they often miss in front or it feels very heavy coming up and it should mm-hmm. feel very light and fast the bar should feel very light and fast coming up. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's probably the main thing that I see, and mm-hmm. I'm correcting the most, is people not completely finishing that pull, getting the bar into the hips. The confidence mm-hmm. to hold the line and be right. patient. What, mm-hmm. what causes people to not finish the pull? What are some things that they do? Uh, one, and this goes along with another common mistake, is not, being, not staying back on the heels um, throughout the lift from the ground. So what people tend to do is that um, yeah, if they'll rush their hips forward, they'll end up becoming toe heavy. And so the bar is going to be lower on their thighs. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not going to be in an ideal position. Um, if they have a bad start position, um, then the bar is going to be out in front a little bit. Uh, just basically not staying back on the heels and not keeping the bar close to the body. Um, I, think, I think a lot of people think about jumping too much. Jumping too much, And this is much, where yeah. I'm, not, I'm not really a big fan of Bergener warm-up. Yeah. Um, just because it's it's teaching you to 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 move your body up and right. not not really the bar too much. I mean, I think a lot of people and I, and I don't think it, it, it's people's interpretation of the warm up, right. like the Bergener warm up. I think it is messed up. And what ends up happening is is they get past their knees and then they want to move the weight to their toes yeah, because exactly. that's how you jump, right? Exactly. But that's not exactly how you yeah. snatch or clean, right? Because you actually want to finish with your hips with the weight still on yeah. your heels. Yeah, weightlifting is all about position. So if you're not in the right position, you're gonna it's everything's gonna be off. So you have to make sure that you're 
able to be in that proper position. And so you're going to have to basically practice a lot of those drills, like doing a lot of those, the, the Thacker warm up and, and, and things like that. So you can learn that position and mm-hmm. do things like yeah. Do things like RDLs to practice having right. your back being strong, strong in those positions. Because Absolutely, I think most people yeah. just aren't strong enough to hold it long enough right. to get it where it needs to go. Right. That's why you need to do things like yeah. RDLs and snatch pulls with holds. Like, okay, here's what this position feels like. Observe, I'm on my heel. That's what it feels like. Mm-hmm. Build the strength that requires to be there. I guess that's all you know, the first pull is, right? It's just to get to where it well, needs to go. Yeah. Then you go. Yeah, the first mm-hmm. pull. The whole point of the first pull is to have a good setup for your second pull, right? Because it doesn't matter what else happens at all in the lift if your yeah. first pull is messed up because you're already out of position and you're not going to get that position back. Yeah. You're not going to have a bad first pull and, and then have a good second pull. Right. That never it's ha- not going to happen. 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 And that happens. Yeah. And you know, a bad first pull can be the cause of either you know. And this I see this a lot. People will have like you have your your hips come up you know faster than than the rest than your knees. And so what ends up happening is that if your if your butt's all in there. Guess where the weights the weight is the, the weights stripper on, snatch yeah, yeah the weights on your toes now so unless, not, unless so you're doomed stripper snatch can be you're doomed from the get go because the weight's already out in front you're already toe heavy well I'll like correct I'll correct you bro let me correct you you're doomed unless you're Russian yeah then you just snatch that shit you yeah. just snatch four pounds every head with a with your heels touching and your ass in the air it doesn't matter hey, hey nobody listen to Chris Moore right now he's confusing you Mike tells me all the time I'm not Chinese enough to, to <laughs> look like a Chinese lifter yeah, yeah so all these Chinese guys I, I, I'm doing this. I want I to see, try that. I see Alex trying something in the corner. I'm like, what are you doing? He goes, well, I saw this on a YouTube video. I'm like, you're not Chinese enough for that, bro. <laughs> yeah. Hashtag not Chinese enough. <laughs> Complaints uh, to I, follow. I, I want to go back to a little bit of what uh, Chris was, or you said it, uh, Alex. It was uh, being strong in positions. Yeah. And I think a lot of times what you'll see with CrossFit is the coach or any, any weightlifting coach maybe that is not very, uh, hasn't been doing this very long, will say, okay, we're gonna practice the movement with a PVC pipe or an empty barbell. All right, now we're gonna work up to one rep max. And that's like the exposure that a lot of people get to, uh, get to weightlifting. You know, it's like, okay, PVC pipe, all right, we'll just work up to a heavy snatch. And they never go through like position deadlifts. Right. Let's do, let's practice pulling a heavy weight to the knees with proper technique. All right, well, let's, work on moving up to mid thigh no. and then you can you know, kind of slowing it down you don't have to uh yeah you break it down to segments and, and you get strong in positions and maybe you don't worry about being fast yet because speed will come with good positions right one of the things that helped me get better at weightlifting the fastest was doing technique reps doing singles with like 50 or 60 percent where it was heavy enough to feel but i could still move fast enough to do it perfect every time so i start my work off my workouts out doing like a set, a set of ten with like thirty seconds or maybe maybe a minute in between those reps, where I wasn't getting fatigued, but I was doing perfect reps every single time, and then I'd start to build up and, and go heavier after I did all my technique work with kind of a moderate weight, like fifty or sixty percent. Yeah, I actually like to do um, you know fifty, sixty percent, like moderate rep, a lot of reps at moderate weights where you're not going to screw it up, but then do, when you get heavy, do segment it with weight, and then. You know, months and months and months down the road, you piece it all together, and all of a sudden you can be in decent positions with heavy weight, and right, that's how you're going to make progress. And that, and that's the thing. I mean, it's not going to be overnight, like you guys are saying. You have to practice all the time. It's not something that you know you have to do a thousand reps before you can learn you know the proper way. And if you've been doing it wrong or not the best way, then it's going to take a thousand more reps to unlearn it and do it. You know. Right. A better I, way. I'd rather have an athlete that hasn't done, hasn't yeah. tried doing it before, yeah, I've, than I've, to have someone who's been doing it wrong for two years. Yeah, I've had some mm-hmm. people in the in that weight one on one class. The guy, he one of the guys, he never had touched a barbell before, and I think that that's the best because if you learn the right way to do it, you'll be much better. Yeah, especially off down if you're, there's no unlearning. Unlearning right. is always harder than right. learning. Yeah, yeah especially yeah. if you have a little bit of athletic background, we can move really well right. with that blank slate. Then you're. Right, you're doing it. I guess that's a good time to make that point. I guess rule number one to getting good at weightlifting is to be easy on yourself and give your cha- yourself a chance to get familiar with it. People try to learn it for two, three, four weeks, a month, two months. Right. I go, yeah, this is not just this is not coming for me. Yeah, I mean, you're gonna be, dude, you're gonna be really, very frustrated. It's incredibly yeah. hard yeah. to move really efficiently and sharply in perfect position under a heavy load. This this is a very complex thing. This is way more complex than anything else you're doing in your life, probably. 
Like yeah. probably, probably the hardest thing you're going to do. So you're, you're not going to master this in a month. So yeah. that takes somebody else 10 years to master. All, all, right. the, all the people that don't, don't do weightlifting are like, that dude's full of shit. And all the weightlifters are like, yeah, that's no, right. If you that's think I'm right. full of shit. <laughs> like, I know all the powders are listening like, fuck you, dude. Weightlifters, <laughs> they want to get better. They need to deadlift more. And I will tell you, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. You don't. I could have a guy who deadlifts fucking a thousand pounds and go, here, clean jerk 400 pounds. Like, fuck it, I could do that. And then they deadlift the fastest shit and then nothing happens. Because this is hard. It's much harder than all that silly shit. Give yourself yeah. a break. Well, what do you say, Chris, about, uh, you know, uh, someone who takes somebody and makes their deadlift higher and then their power clean all of a sudden goes up? Wait, it, we've, we've heard I've this seen story this, before. Yeah, I've seen it before. And it's true. If you get stronger when you're, like, if I take a, a young college football player who can deadlift... 400 pounds, you know, 18 year old kid or something. And he's fit and strong and fast. He doesn't really know the lifts at all yet. Cause what football player does know the lifts really well. It's kind of a rare thing. But if you take that guy who knows rudimentary movement and you make him deadlift 500. Yeah. The bar just feels that much lighter and it works for a while. The problem is if you try to then use that approach to make the, the, the former 200 pound power clean go from 300 to now 400, that's when that shit doesn't work anymore without the mechanics. It just right. doesn't work. It can't be done. Every power out there and every strong is like, all you need to do is do what I do. Then the American way of thing will be fixed. It's just not true. It's like me saying, you know, if all I need to do is implement my problems and I'll fix all of government. That shit ain't true. These are some things just ain't true. And that's one of them, homie. <laughs> I know Mike, when Mike teaches his, his weightlifting um, uh, seminars, he basically talks about the triad, which is the combination of, of strength, mobility, and technique and you you got to have a balance between those three things and where people fall short is that they focus on one piece of that you know three-part series and they don't focus on the other two so powerlifters might focus too much on strength and not on technique yeah. and mobility as much so, you know yeah. some people knock american weightlifters for only focusing on technique and not for focusing on strength enough whether that's true or not is, is debatable but um, having a balance between all three of those things is what will ultimately make you uh, have the ability to be a good weightlifter. I actually know what weightlifting means. I don't think everyone's focused on technique that much. Yeah, that, that's just, those are assumptions you people should are be. making. Right. Yeah. Yeah, oh, we're not like, are not. It's like, if we're focusing on technique, man, we're doing a terrible job at it. Like, I guess people watch I'm not, it. I'm not saying we all have like bad somebody technique. Sits, which somebody is sits down in the crowd and sees them moving well. Hmm. And they go, well, how come they're just not lifting as much? We'll just get stronger. I guess that's just the, the high-level view people see of American way of thing. Oh, just get stronger. Then you'll just lift as much as those guys in, in, in Siberia. Yeah. And I, I hate talking about issue. this because this is like the easy scapegoat like claim. is like, why don't Americans lift as much as somebody else or another country? It's like, well, we do regularly drug yeah, test Yeah, drugs everybody. have a lot to do with so, that. But. I mean, you take, you take our best <laughs> lifter and you give him a gram of test a week for, for uh, a couple months – He'll probably he'll win everything. Probably. I think the re research <laughs> Actually, was saying that like he could increase his, his strength by ten percent. Yeah, you increase go up. you increase yeah. Kendrick Ferris's lifts by ten percent. Yeah, oh, he's he's a monster. He he he's he's now, he's now, he now has world records. Look, that's the point. I'll you know make I mean? like, people yeah. like that. people like Jared Fleming and Kendrick and um, Donovan at the training center. I watch these guys squat and lift and they're strong work. they're yeah. strong as shit they're yeah. strong as anybody and that's dude. the thing they're like, strong as anybody strong. they just can't practice as much as not on dope yeah. <laughs> like some, some people may be fooling around with some things i'm not gonna be the guy who's like are you i troll comment number two somebody you gonna tell me there's <laughs> no u.s well you're a fool chris moore i'm saying that if you compare us to other countries what they administer it's almost like you will get laughed at if you're not on heavy amounts. Like, oh, what do you mean? You're not taking your supplemental regime? <laughs> Are you an idiot? <laughs> and, I mean, I always figured all of our potential Olympians were all fullbacks in the NFL. And I mean, Probably, still, yeah, yeah. our uh, guys, our top who, lifters have great technique. There are guys in the NFL yeah. right now who will wake up in the morning and eat Cheetos for breakfast and then go for eight hours, run into other genetic, genetic freaks, and they get paid $10 million for it. Like, and then dominate American football with no effort into what they're doing. If you put them into a similar situation that like a uh, Kolkov is in, you'd have monsters. You'd have human monsters just snatching anything. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get back to <laughs> clean and jerk and snatch <laughs> technique flaws. Uh, I know I know. one of the things that you bring up a lot is people have a lot of trouble pulling under the bar. Yeah. Like they, they'll, a lot of people will only be able to power clean or power snatch and it'll take them another six or eight months to be able to catch in a rock bottom position right. um, with good technique. Right. Well, a lot of that there's a lot of there's a lot of that has to go into that. One of the big things is definitely mobility. Mm. Um, you know, if you're if you don't if you lack the shoulder mobility or the hip mobility, 
um, to get deep into the squat, especially with the especially with the snatch. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the biggest. That's the biggest thing. The snatch. Um, so if you don't have that mobility, it's going to be a lot more difficult. Um, you're not going to feel as comfortable in that bottom position. Yeah, catching really low in an overhead squat is an interesting thing because you can have a mobility restriction almost anywhere, and it can prevent you from doing right. that. Whether it's right. hip, right. hip, ankle, I mean, the or shoulder, shoulders, it can screw the you. The bar up. has to be in the right place, and if the bar is not in that right <laughs> place, it is, it is it really done. holds up my snatch. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just brutal, coach. The second, the second thing that people. T- tend to not do really is keeping a lot of tension on the bar and really think about pulling the bar Mm -hmm. and pulling your body under the bar people people think that oh if i pull the bar high the bar is just gonna land where it's supposed to go but that's not true at all you need to put that bar where it needs to go so you Mm -hmm. have to aggressively pull your body underneath the bar and i mean that's one thing people People think, oh, it's, there's first pull, second pull, third pull. It's one continuous pull mm-hmm. until you're underneath the barbell. Do you think mm-hmm. that leads to a lot of inconsistency as well? Because like if I go to pull, I go, all right, straight arms. Back everything where it needs to go. And I pull, <laughs> I go, bah! and I explode. And I just quit using my arms. And I guess the bar can just venture, start venturing wherever it wants to go, right? It's floating and you're but trying that's to... What ha- exactly, that's what happened. It's floating. So I did. You, you, you want explode. to float. Yeah. You, yeah. Don't want to, you want to explode yeah. and then use your arms to guide yourself right in the pocket. Right. You yeah. want to... You absolutely want want to continue pulling on the bar as hard as hard as possible until you are underneath the bar yeah i think i think the uh, whole make your arms ropes and i i it depends on when if the athlete when i'm watching them if they're if they're getting a little too much early arm pull then i'll be like just treat your arms like ropes and your hands (laughs) like hooks okay um but I think uh, what's happening is people take that too far. They're like, oh, my arms are ropes yeah. the whole time. <laughs> I'm just Until it gets overhead, loose. right? So what they do right. is they, they pop it off their hips, <laughs> yeah. and then they go, I <laughs> hope I can catch this. <laughs> yeah. and I that's have rope why, arms, coach. And yeah. that's why, like, why do why do so many lifters make 50% of their lifts at 90%? Right. It's because you're getting lucky half the time. Right. Um, and, and you probably have pretty good aim, but it could be a lot better. So uh, one of the things that I think really helps is first – engaging your shoulders really using your lats when you pass your knees and help use your shoulders to keep that bar close to your body as you come up and that engagement of the shoulder on the way up is going to help it stay engaged when you're supposed to be pulling under the other thing is is after the point after the bar touches your hips man your your biceps should be ripping your body underneath that bar and it should be just as much of a pull under as it was a pull up for your legs when you see a guy a big time weightlifter which even though I've been looking at this for like two decades, I still, every YouTube video I see of a guy, like I watched one yesterday, this uh, Russian lifter going for a, a snatch double at 190 kilos, I'm weighing like 225. I know I mixed my 100 kilo body weight. So I mixed, I mixed kilos of pounds in one example. I'm, I'm confused. Uh, but it's not, they're not exploding up with hips with loose arms and all of a sudden just catching 440 yeah. pounds or 420. That's not how it's happening. You got to have that whole complex tight the whole time. If you want to have that right. stable when it hits you, because catching a huge weight overhead with loose yeah. arms and shoulders, you're going to immediately drop that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you have to be extremely aggressive and extremely tight throughout the entire lift. And that's that's one thing I see a lot of people do is that, you know, they'll, they won't be tight from the start, you know, if you're not tight from the start, you're not aggressive, <laughs> your chances of you making a heavy lift are, are very slim. And you can and, be heavy. I mean, you can be aggressive without yeah. ripping the bar off the floor. Right, exactly. Right. Yeah, that's another thing to see. Being really fast off the floor. <laughs> be fast. Slow yeah. down. Be loose. Because, yeah. I up. mean, if you're if you're fast off the floor, pulling off the floor, ripping it off the floor, you're, you're probably not in a good position. Yeah, Unless so. you're too. But, but to, to Chris's Kendrick point from earlier, picks it up fast. He does Why pick it up I? fast, but he does he, it perfect every time. He does, but he has how many years of experience he has lifted? Exactly. <laughs> well, dude, that's impressive we, we to watch, say, We say not to go too fast off the floor. We really mean don't go so fast that you change your technique. Right. You're supposed to go as fast as possible with good right. technique, but some people, when they try to pull yeah. extra fast, yeah. they their butt shoots up, they get yeah. toe heavy, Absolutely. everything gets out in front of them, you and then they're missing too, the lift yeah. forward. You can Unless, go too slow, because we see that. Unless, Unless you've yeah. been lifting for five years, you're probably going too fast off the floor. Yeah. Like and you could probably go slower and get more benefit out of that. Once you've been listening, lifting for five years, then you can start trying to speed it up off the yeah. floor. I mean, yeah, going back to that, uh, getting on the bar, and a lot of times the last thing I'm, I'm seeing is confidence. You know, uh, a lot of people, because they're not used to getting under the bar, um, they'll be afraid 
and this is this is also my problem. This is my problem too. Like before I you know start fixing this, but you're not a perfect lifter. I know, I'm not, <laughs> but uh, not being confident to get down in that position. So I mean, if you're always if you're always catching it high, if you're always power clean or power snatch, ride it down. You know, get in that bottom of the squat, you sit in that squat. Like. Yeah, you gotta you gotta see what it's like because if you don't get that feel every time, then you're never you're never you're just not gonna know. It's not a good example to get compared but the same kind of phenomenon happens in powerlifting where guys will get so uptight about the weight they're moving they'll start doing things like we talked about deadlifts last week rack pulls the problem is you get so strong in one place right power clean seems to be the same kind of thing happening right I'm so good at power clean how come I try to squat clean I, squat I can't clean squat clean because you don't move <laughs> the range of motion like if you never take yeah. things off the ground how can you be strong right. down there if you never right. touch your chest all the way when you bench press because you like doing partials because you look stronger <laughs> well how can you lower something then I guess the yeah. same thing with squat clean if you've never been down there how you know how yeah. to navigate that situation? And how are you gonna notice? How you, how are you gonna stand up? A lot of people you can't stand up. <laughs> you don't. You don't know, player. Yeah. All right, guys, we're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, we're gonna talk about how you can fix these problems forever. Perfection. Jason Kalifa, CrossFit Games champion. Jason Khalifa, ladies and gentlemen, of 2008 CrossFit Games champion, Anthony. Hey guys, Mike Bledsoe here with Technique Watt again. We're going to go over hang snatches. Uh, if you saw the previous video where we were doing snatches off the blocks, uh, the snatches off the blocks are much more technique and position oriented. Whereas a hang snatch is more of a building strength and positions. Uh, I, like, I like the hang snatch because you're really working on your second and third pull. Uh, if you don't have good mobility uh, and you have a poor first pull or you have a poor transition from a first to a second pull, you can still train your second and third pull without having to worry about the setup. Now, and. And one of our other technique wide videos, we did go over uh, stop snatches, and that is where you would stop on the way up, you'd pause, and then finish. So that would be a stop snatch or a pausing snatch. Uh, and what differs with a hang snatch versus a stop snatch or a pause snatch is that you're going to deadlift the bar up. You still want to practice having similar technique because you don't want to pick up a bar and never practice, you don't want to practice bad reps. So I'm still going to pick it up as if I were going to snatch it, I do a snatch deadlift, I get a top, and I go back down and I reset. So I'm going to go down to a mid thigh, and when I go down, I'm going to attempt to get in the same exact position I would normally be in as if I were coming off the floor. So I'm going to go down, I'm going to set up, my back is nice and tight. Shoulders pulled back. I'm engaging my lats to move, keep that bar in close. And from here, jump and get underneath, okay? So, a lot of people can do a good bit of weight here. So it's good at building strength in your Olympic lifts. Also note that I didn't go from here, straight overhead. The bar actually came up and met my hips. So it's not a, a yank straight from mid thigh. I'm actually squeezing it. I'm squeezing it from here to here, and then when I get in that power position, I really, I really kick it in gear there. Hang snatch. <laughs> I don't want to know that stuff, man. Get that shit out of here. I want a certain level of privacy in my life. So. And you think you have that? <laughs> I, I'm gonna do my best. And we're back. <laughs> and we're back. For the weightlifting technique flaws episode. Oh yeah, that's what <laughs> we were talking about weightlifting technique flaws that you might have, and now we're going to talk about how you might be able to fix those. We talked about all the problems. Let's talk. Yeah, you know solutions. what I? You know what I just realized is we did not do. I didn't do the intro right today. You sure did. I'm a terrible, <laughs> terrible person. Why don't you do it now? <laughs> Make sure you go to barbellshrug.com and sign up for the newsletter. Uh, we're doing new stuff all the time. And uh, that's the best way to keep up with what we're doing because we're obviously not good at mentioning things on the <laughs> podcast that are important. It's it's hard. I forgive you. 
I forgive you. Chris yeah. forgives you. So, I mean, uh, we're going to be doing like a live thing with Brian McKenzie here soon. We got the Barbell Shrugged weightlifting meet coming up. But these are things that we don't normally talk about on the podcast because we just don't, I don't know. Scatterbrain. Scatterbrain, man. It's the weekend. So, I, I'm <laughs> Maybe once you cut that beard off, some of the energy that goes to growing that will go to your brain again. <laughs> could be. It's like a plant. If you trim off some of the leaves, it starts putting out more fruit. That could be your situation. Uh, it all makes sense now. It makes total sense. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Scratches his beard. Deep thought moment. I don't think it'll help. <laughs> so, all right. So if your weightlifting isn't as good as you'd like it to be, what are a couple of ways that you could go about fixing all of your technique flaws that you may not even know that you have? Uh, well... What I've seen help a lot of a lot of people in my class um, is definitely doing the uh, the Thacker warm up. Uh, the Thacker warm up. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with that. But yeah, explain what that is. Yeah, so that's basically a warm up that was coined by Justin Thacker. He's a coach out in St. Louis. But I what like it, it so far. But what it, what is episode sixty? To, yeah, six zero. <laughs> Good memory 60. on that boy. I know. And thirty four. And thirty four. <laughs> wow. Are you just naming numbers? Is that true? What you're saying? Is that just numbers? You're he, just doesn't know. Know. Right. he doesn't know. <laughs> it's 34. If you want, check out episodes 1 through 77, <laughs> and you'll find it. <laughs> All right, so Justin Thacker has a series of warm-ups that yeah. he does, and, uh, and you, we use those in the weightlifting yeah. class and in the muscle game program. Yeah. Um, it's basically you know, just to get your body primed to move the barbell efficiently with that with that perfect bar path. So there's three main parts, um, A, B, and C, mm -hmm. uh, gradually progressing. It's a, it's a gradual progression. So what it's supposed to do is just uh, get you to hammer those positions down. Mm -hmm. So you get that, that muscle memory, that mental memory of the positions that you need to be in. Because like we said before, positioning is probably one of the most important things of and actually is the most important thing the weightlifting technique is position okay so, so doing that so specifically what positions do you need to to kind of stretch in what are the position stretches uh well the first position stretch is you know you're just in the bottom of a squat so you mm -hmm. get you get loose in the bottom of the squat get used to being in that squat position mm -hmm. um you have the bar you know sitting on the quads so you can sit in that you can sit in that squat position for you know quite a long time and then mm -hmm. you know if you're doing the snatch you either have the bar raised overhead in that snatch position, okay? Yeah. So you get that feeling of pushing up on that barbell, you know, really getting the active shoulders, and then, you know, you do an overhead squat. So it's it's that, that gradual progression, mm -hmm. you know, to get you primed to um, move some weight. And so then, you know, the next part is the, is the position uh, progression. So you start from, you know, you, you pause at each position. So you're gonna pause at the floor, so mm -hmm. you get in that good that good start position. So you you always are in that tight, solid, rigid position at the bottom. At Sounds the, great so far. Yeah, and then you know <laughs> the second position is at the knees. So you're practicing that first pull, and then the third position is you know higher up the thighs and the pockets. So you're getting to that tucking it right in there. Oh yeah, getting like, cozy. Right, so you're getting mm -hmm. it right, keeping the bar close, and that's that's important. So and then. Mm -hmm. And then you do, you know, your power snatches, your power cleans, and your or your uh, full cleans or full snatches. And so mm -hmm. you're constantly just adding that to progression, and so you can get that drilled in. So all this is done with an empty barbell. It's a lot of repetitions yeah. in perfect positions. Yeah. That way, when you go to start adding weight to the bar, right. you've already done a bunch of right, you know, very light unloaded repetitions. Right. And so you've been in every position that you're going to be in for the workout. You should be warm through all the appropriate right. ranges of motion. Probably right. okay if guys uh, use like just a pipe to begin, right? Because that's it's probably a lot of work. So for some people, it's probably like a training session. I've seen that yeah. before. Um, it's Piper very challenging. Uh, people, you, I mean, you can put weight on it. And mm -hmm. in fact, uh, for the other parts of the warm up, particularly the second and third parts, um, there is there you do typically want to put um, some bumpers on there so you can be in the right uh, starting position. But mm -hmm. you definitely want to keep it light because it is challenging. A lot of people complain. Smoke They're like, ass, yeah. I don't. I don't think it, there's a lot of room for empty. For, with a pipe I think it's yeah. empty barbell is fine uh, some guys might want to go with like a a training bar yeah but, yeah. but 35 a, pound but a, women's bar might work really well but too I'm not a big fan of the PVC yeah. pipe with the Thacker method yeah you definitely mm -hmm. want to use you definitely want to use the bar um, just because just get used to using the bar you know suck it up yeah. Yeah. it's really hard I guess that if, if your warm up is really really tough like that's just a sign that you should be doing a lot more things right. yeah no big deal if you get <laughs> yeah. tired put the weight down right. rest for a second shake it, it out yeah. you'll yeah. get in shape 
Yeah. Yeah, if, if, you want, if you want to really see what the hell we're talking about, this might be hard to visualize. If you've never done it before, we have, we have a four-part video series that we did with Justin Thacker. That's part of the Technique Quad, um, part of our Technique Quad video. So just Google Justin Thacker Technique yeah. Quad, and, and he has that four-part that series, so you can watch the whole thing. That was an interesting idea. When, when it brought me back to the example of Kendrick in that wad. People come, yeah, he's, he's out of shape and that, but to be this kind of weightlifter, your shape, quote-unquote, people can't see me making quote signs, your shape is actually your work capacity in these motions these positions is astronomical yeah Dude, right. that's like to, to jerk with good form like 400 for five is a really fit thing to do yeah so we're using we're using that term like get in shape kind of specifically here like in these positions in these ways of moving it could be very foreign to you, even if you have been doing crossfit if you're tired don't think like oh shit why is this so hard why am i out of shape it's just a different kind of thing you're developing yeah, it's, it's it, very specific yeah i mean being in shape just means you you're able to do what you want to do yeah this is a like very specific right. thing if, if you don't want to do 30 snatches for time then that's not the kind of shape you're going to be in yeah you're going to be in great shape in another way um another thing i like about the thacker method is just it's you're simultaneously working on mobility so right. not the way a lot of times people think about mobility. Usually people think about mobility and they think bands and, and holding stretches. Um, Nash, and, gnashing your chode out. Yeah, all yeah that stuff. you know, <laughs> lacrosse balls and all that kind of stuff, which is good, which I think you should do as well. Uh, but with the Thacker method, it kind of, um, it's, it's, it's as, more you're, specific. as you're going through like the position that's stretches the, before the ABCs, the ABCs is like you are working through the positions, but before that you're going to do the positional stretches. Right. And you know that's where you're you're holding the bar on your knees, and you're working that ankle mobility in your hips. You're getting your hips nice and low, um, and then you're gonna get overhead if you're doing a snatch. We're gonna get in the rack position with the clean, and you're gonna really stretch those shoulders out and get those shoulders in the position you want to have heavy weight overhead with. Yep. And then you're gonna get to the bottom of the squat with an overhead squat or a front squat, and then you're gonna work. You know that's gonna be shoulders, hips, and ankles, and you're gonna hold those positions like you would any stretch but it's going to be with a barbell it's going to be extremely weightlifting specific um you can be pretty weightlifting uh mobile i guess you could say and not have like great mobility in some other areas where people traditionally think uh being very flexible like you're not going to be a yogi uh if all you do is uh bar stretches uh but you That's good because I want to be a yogi now. If you combine, <laughs> if you combine, uh, if you combine those yoga stretches with some good weightlifting specific stretches, uh, then you'll be in a nice, healthy spot. Yeah. So you know, in an ideal world, it would be good to have a you know a high level weightlifting coach that can yeah. be there to to watch you and critique you and give you like immediate feedback. But that's uh, a little bit too much of an idealism for most people. Most people don't have a high level weightlifting yeah, coach. There's not at their too disposal. many gyms that have a high level weightlifting. Not everybody coach. has you yeah. walking around, Alex. <laughs> <That's right>. Jesus. <laughs> so if that's the case, what can people do to to still get some great coaching and still improve their lifts? If they uh, don't live in Memphis, you can't hire Alex Macklin. <laughs> <laughs> what should they do? Um, they shouldn't watch Chinese weightlifting videos and copy, right? They shouldn't do that shit. <laughs> well, no, I mean, it's yeah, cool. I mean, it looks great. Just be, you, remember, you're not Chinese. Yeah. Step first. Well, <laughs> one of the things that uh, definitely you can do is, um, you know, tape your own lifts. Um, you know, <clears throat> review your own you're lifts. You're not going to tell us not taping? I thought we went over this. Why? Have you, do you not watch the show? Uh, <laughs> what is going on? Not all the time. It's not. It's not taping. Recording. It's Recording. not 1991. <laughs> watch the beard video. I'll tell you're you all about. You're not trying to communicate with your grandmother here. All right. So sonograph yourself, yeah. fucking recording. So you so you can record. You can record your own lifts. Um, <laughs> Thank <and> watch you. <laughs> you know, watch them or you know, good, send them in. People forget how you got a you got a, <clears throat> a phone in your pocket right now. They'll take yeah. HD video of you. You can set it anywhere. Right. Mm -hmm. You can put it on YouTube. You can watch it yeah. immediately. That's a huge tool because the Absolutely. bottom line is that the thing people forget what you feel like what's happening is probably not what's actually happening. Right. Oh, I feel like I'm right there. Oh, I, I, I feel like I got it right position. And you watch it. Oh, shit. I wasn't even close. Yeah. yeah. Dude, record, record two things. Record yourself. One lift from directly from the front, front. One lift directly from the side. Put both videos on Facebook and just write 
what do you think I'm doing wrong? Yeah. And just see what the world tells you. And there's and a lot then of people. All the people that you know don't know what they're talking about, don't listen to them. And all the people <laughs> I mean, that you do know, you know, you know, know what they're talking yeah, about, take their troll advice. Troll comment number three. You're inviting <laughs> trolls in your world to you do this shit. It's true. <laughs> think you look like a fucking bitch. Yeah, I mean, you gotta. You gotta <laughs> <laughs> that's what I think. Do you even lift? No, you gotta. You gotta filter through the the other stuff. Don't ask I mean. your fr- friends what, what, how your snatch looks. Yeah. <laughs> Too but, light, uh, homo. <laughs> <laughs> Put some fucking weight on that bar. There's a lot of people that you know. If you post it on Facebook, you know some people who know what they're talking about. Man, you know. Yeah, if you got feedback. a lot of CrossFit friends, yeah. they, they will help you out. Yeah, they're good people. Yeah. yeah. Well, just looking at your own lips yourself. I yeah. Mean, that's that's huge because uh, if you haven't gotten to the point where you can feel how it's supposed to be, right? Uh, seeing how it, you know, if you just watch some videos of some guys that know what they're doing and then watch yourself. Yeah, it might become extremely apparent what you might be doing right. wrong. Yeah. I don't and look that, like them at all. And that's another thing. I mean, yeah. like, I mean, yeah, I'm you either say, awesome or I'm terrible. You said you said don't don't watch Chinese lifters, but actually, I mean, a good way to see if you're actually doing proper technique is to watch somebody with really good technique. So if you, you know, get on YouTube and watch the Olympics, you know, the recording of the 2012 Olympics, watch those guys lift. <laughs> yeah, being, they're a, only being the a very, best. Being a very yeah. visual learner, if I watch somebody yeah. that that is really 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 good. Yeah. I can be like, oh, that's what it's supposed yeah. to look like. I'm gonna go oh, pretend yeah. I'm yeah, that guy, just, and, and it's just, that, it's so you know, much better. Play that YouTube video and just <laughs> open up on your browser or whatever the video you took yeah. of yourself. Just lay them side by side. Find a couple right. examples. Just do your research. Compare. You'll, you, it's not a perfect way to start. It's not ideal for right. somebody walking you through what is the problem. But you'll be able to see the patterns emerge. Like, yeah. Wow, I'm not doing what these five guys all seem to do. Yeah, I need I, to work on that. Actually, uh, I saw some of the biggest improvements in my weightlifting. I would watch uh, Peter Demas. Oh, I would God. watch. I would watch him lift right before I would lift. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and then I would be like, "I'm Pierce Demas," and then that, all of a sudden, a, I was, it sounds crazy, but it was, helps. Yeah. It does sudden, help. D- Doug even said, "Man, you look like Pierce Demas." Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Mission accomplished. That's right. Yeah, you just watch how he slaps his feet on the ground. He's moving so fast. Yeah, he's so just. You watch a guy powerful. just casually pick up 300 pounds. Like, whoa, man, he blew my mind. Or, yeah. like, I'm sorry, yeah. dude. I, I'm not even a weight lifter. Every time I train, I'll go out and watch. A few Klokov's crazy ass videos before I go into the garage, like just to see. Okay, here's what, here's the kind of vibe I can take in the gym with me. Watch this guy just dominate and be intense, and it's just it changes everything. Yep, that kind of work trend in. Trend where instead of like you know basketball players will be like Kobe or LeBron, Klokov, Klokov. <laughs> He's coming to the states. We gotta try to. You have hey, vodka right here, shots with that dude. I've, I've got a contact. We're gonna try to make that shit. No, no, I'm gonna try to. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna try to find some way. To dude, if we can get cloak off, we're gonna work on that. Man, we're gonna fucking work on that <laughs> shit. On. Jeez. We need a translator though. Um, I, I would make some pretty big sacrifices to make here, that one. I'm cloak off. You ask me a question. Go. Ready? Go. <sighs> <laughs> How'd you get so handsome, cloak off? <laughs> no, ask me a question. I'll go. Ask. Ask me anything. Ask me about my pool. Ask me. I'm starstruck. I yeah, can't yeah. say anything. <laughs> no. I go, is a uh, Volcay pull uh, 250 kilo? <laughs> Five time. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, what's your favorite video? You have a video that you like. You repeatedly go back to. You're like, Dan Flag. Dan Flag, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Inside joke. That, I'll be at the CTP camera. CTP camera. Okay. There you go. Oh, yeah. Flag. yeah do you, you, have, you have a favorite YouTube video oh, of, oh. of weightlifting that you just always go back to? If it's if it's max out snatch day or clean, what are you oh, watching, dude? What's man. the one? Uh, I know we're asking a lot because there's a lot of awesome. I mean, I've, I've watched a lot, but that Piro's Dima, there's this one Piro's Demas video. It's a it's an Iron Mind video. The training hall video. Training hall videos. Yeah, hall videos. He, he's like just doing power cleans with the, the 300 pound power yeah, clean. Beyond, that looks like he's just doing a reverse curl with an empty barbell. Beyond, yeah. the, and the guy was like, "This is the weight. This is a weight beyond what any American lifter is doing." And he's just time, yeah, right? and he's just power cleaning it so fast. He says, it's so yeah. powerful. How many guys you see can just casually power yeah. clean 100 yeah. kilos? Wait, wait, I must have watched that video like wait, wait, 170 times. or, or he's 187. Like 180, 180, he was 84 kilo, right? Yeah, one, yeah. 85. He's like, kilo. He's like Dr. Brian yeah, Schilling. Yeah. 187. Yeah. 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 Not a yep. not a big guy nope. to be doing and that. You much watch weight. him. Yeah. It's like speed, double body weight for a power clean. Yeah. The speed of his jerks and cleans. Yeah, the, just the motion yeah. is just insane. Yeah. Those are my favorite videos to watch when, when guys that are world class are doing like seventy percent. Oh gosh. And and it may or maybe it's a weight that you you might like be able to PR on. Like they're using your max weight, but they're just destroying it and they're moving so yeah. fast. Like that's always more everything. impressive to yeah. me than watching oh, them. Yeah. Yeah. Watching them hit a, a one rep max of their own because one rep max mm-hmm. it kind of looks the same. Like. 
it, they're moving slow because it's really heavy for them. But to really see how fast they are, watching them at sub max is really impressive. That yeah. brings us to a point also is I think too many people practice with just enough speed right. to get the weight that they have on the bar you overhead. You fast all the time. And so yeah. that doesn't mean, yeah, again, I think sometimes yeah. you go, hey, you should be moving fast all the time. And people yeah. go, well, I need to rip it off the floor then. No. Yeah. As fast as you possibly can go and with good positions. Right. That's how fast you should be going. Right. I think a lot of times people kind of get that mixed up a little bit. You're never it, trying to move slow. Right. Exactly. I mean, I think ever. You, guys, you guys ever watch those Iron Mind videos of, of Vanev back when he was like in his mm-hmm. prime? Like when he's when he's pulling snatches, he pulls like 70, 100 kilos, 120, 130. Like he's just like building up yeah. like five kilos at a time, yeah, and every video. rep just looks ridiculously yeah. fast. That that's my favorite video. That's actually yeah. what, what I why I brought that up because I was thinking about that when you were talking. And then the last Google is Latin Vanev. The last re- way to get to fix your problems is to have patience. Yeah. Oh God, it's so people people boggled my fucking mind with the expectations <laughs> they place on their poor, poor selves. Like, I've never done anything ever in my life. I want to come into the gym. I want to snatch what Piers Dima snatches. I want to look like Camille Liz Blank a blank blank. <laughs> Camille Liz Blank block. I want to have the. I want to have abs like Rich Froning. Can I have all this in one month? Because if not, I'll get fucking frustrated and quit. And I'll I'll troll your ass on YouTube forever. <laughs> Chris has no patience for people with no patience. Yeah, yeah. fuck that. <laughs> yeah. No, but look, me. Look, the bottom line is you gotta. If you're gonna get anywhere in this world and in this, in this pursuit and CrossFit or whatever, if you really want to maximize your chances, what you'll do is you'll work as hard as you can, of course, and you'll study and you'll learn, but you won't start grasping too quickly, too hard for things outside of your reach right now. You can't put all this expectation. You can't say, "I snatch 100 pounds now. I want to snatch 300." Okay, good, but what? First things first, learn how to put the bar where it's supposed to be. That's where you'll get your immediate right. satisfaction. Right. And if it takes a month to learn just that, it's a hundred percent okay because that's what you need to do. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of people they don't get they they set their expectations way up here, and I've done it a million times. I mean, I still make the mistake of setting my goals too far out, um, and, and I find that anytime I do that, I get not very far into my my journey and then i i change goals or something like that yeah exactly and i find that i'm the most successful at the things where i set extremely attainable goals you know uh and and a lot of times say if it's with weightlifting it's not about how much bar weight is on the bar but just the fact that i got in the train five times this week or yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, it's it could be. You did I, enough to not go backwards. That's a yeah, that's progress. Sometimes. I missed fewer lifts this week than I did last week. Say, say you know week after week I'm I'm working up to ninety percent. Or uh, one way I like to train is I'll, I'll I'll do like a wave loading cycle. And three weeks ago I was hitting ninety percent um, for for reps. And now you know for for singles or doubles and I missed seven out of ten lifts last month. But this month I got nine out of ten. With the same exact weight, that's okay. You're better. I feel. I mean, that's that's progress, and that's what you got to be happy with. Um, I. By the way, you can't. No can't but, beat no myself one, up. No one but me can now use the word progress. It's <laughs> been copyrighted. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah except for <laughs> when I when you open up the book, it says it's not copyrighted. That's what you think. You explicitly write it. I'm playing a very, at the bottom. I'm, I'm very detailed legal strategy. Here. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm bullshit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to learn weightlifting, I mean. It takes a lot of time, and you're going to be really frustrated. And you just have to, you just have to keep, you just have to keep well, practicing. Also, yeah, I mean, I mean a great, a great line. I did this on the other. I told that story in a Barba Buddha podcast. It's still a shorter story now, but I watch a cool video with Josh Homme, front man of Queens of Stone Age, and somebody asked him, "What do you, what do you tell a ten year old kid who wants to play guitar? What do you say? Because playing guitar is fucking hard." And he goes, "Oh, easy. You play because you love it. You do it for yourself. No one else. No other reasons." Like. It's great that I'm an awesome musician. I'm paid to do this. This is my job. I, there's not a day that goes by I don't love this. But I do it because I love it and for no other reason. So if you want to get really good, you'll do it because for you to get better at this, this clean jerk and snatch is what's important to you, not what uh, somebody else is doing. No, I want to f- find my path towards getting this number that's reasonable for me, for myself and nobody else. If you start there... Then, then you're gonna get to a pretty far point, but not reaching for the thing. Not you're not looking at the price first. It's not gonna work. Yeah. So let's say your your technique isn't where it should be. The big question that I get from people all the time is, well, should I should I stay light and work on my technique and then only go heavier once my technique is better, or should I go heavier and get used get used to pulling heavier weights and try to improve 
you know, trying to prove why I'm doing the real thing, uh, what's the answer? Should you go heavy now or, or wait and go heavy later? Well, I mean, I think I think you definitely want to practice technique, you know, definitely with lighter weights. Um, but that being said, you also don't just want to go light all the time. I mm-hmm. mean, um, I think you should try to, you know, work up to something that is doable, mm-hmm. you know, where your technique, you know, doesn't break down. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, stick with that. So, like, you know, if you're 100% is, you know, looks awful, then maybe you should dial it back down and mm-hmm. just practice that, you know, with better technique. 90% might be better for you yeah. at that point. Yeah. So, and that's so, where it's good to have, like, a, a, another person watching you. Right. Go, oh, your technique went totally yeah. shit like, at 85%. Let's do more yeah. at 80% yeah. and then move up later. Like, people in the class, you know, I tell them, you know, we we're, we're trying to learn good technique you know mm-hmm. we have we have a we have a program we have a workout that we that we prescribe and you know it'll be like okay let's do 85% for two reps but if you're missing if you're missing 85% over and over again there's no point in you practicing bad form especially if you got bad form mm-hmm. so you don't really want to learn bad form you want to learn good form so mm-hmm. you need to take it down a little bit mm-hmm. and get to a weight where you can keep that good form and nail it and then okay all right if it's if it's looking pretty good maybe work back up Mm -hmm. but definitely you don't want to sit there and practice missing a lot yeah Yeah, i've got a rule that anytime i'm over 85 percent i try to implement this with our weightlifters yeah anytime we get over 85 percent or so and i miss a lift sometimes if i miss one at 70 percent maybe i got a little distracted in my head you know, something came up and I... Your beard got itching just, or some yeah, shit. Yeah. Who knows? Who I was knows? worried about having to shave my beard. And then, so, you know, I, I still make that 5% jump, right. you know, up to 80% from 75% or something like that. But once you get over 85%, like, if I miss a lift, I just go back down. Yeah. I mean, not, not the third time I miss my lift. The first time I miss my lift after I get 85%, because from day to day, my 85% today may not be my 85% right. tomorrow. Yeah. And and what I do is I just go down five pounds, and then I hit that. And if I hit it, a lot of times I'll just smoke it, and then I'll just go right back up, and then I'll hit that, and then I'll, I'll just keep going up. Right. Or sometimes I have to keep right. going down two or three times. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, that yeah. happens too. And, and, yeah, I get upset with myself, but it's not the end of the world yeah. because guess and what? It's not, I'll train tomorrow, and it'll probably well, be just fine. And it's not – I mean, you're still making progress because you're getting quality reps in. If you're not – Exactly. If you're not getting quality reps in, then there's no way that you're going to pro- you know, progress in the and sport. This is mm-hmm. why I like following percentage-based programs for a lot of people. I think really advanced lifters, sticking to the percentages may not be as important. Mm-hmm. But if you're a beginner – like a lot of times I see people, you know, all right, we're going to work at 85%. And then they go, man, I felt so good. I just went for a PR. I'm like, well, we're going to do that next week. Yeah. You know, maybe, maybe you would have gotten more benefit out of just hanging out at 85% today, getting more quality reps. Maybe you would have gotten an even bigger PR next week. Right. But now you just sat, you just sacrificed next week's uh, 10 pound PR with today's five pound PR. You yeah. blew your load. <laughs> That's right. I feel like with regards to, to bad technique, there's two different types of bad technique. There's technique that's not ideal and your mm-hmm. leverage isn't as good as it could be, so maybe you won't pull quite as heavy as, as weight as you might have, as, as you might be able to with perfect technique. And then there's technique that's just that's bad enough where you're going to hurt yourself. Yeah. And so if your technique is so bad, like your, your back is brutally round, your knees are, your feet are out and your knees are diving in and you're yeah. twisting your knees like you're going to tear your ACL, then that's the time where you shouldn't you, go heavy. Yeah, you you don't want to practice doing that. You're going to hurt yourself. Definitely stay light. Yeah. You're, you're going to yeah. get snatch cancer. Yeah. If you, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, snatch cancer. If you're yeah. pulling with that rounded back and... You know that, that you definitely should take yeah. the, the load off the weight, off the bar. How so. do you, yeah. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. <clears throat> this is a fun part. When you see that, somebody's like, oh, "Can you give me some? Tell me what you think about my lift." And you go, "What I want to say is, God help me, you have forsaken <laughs> all that's holy about <laughs> lifting, and, and you embarrass yourself, and you're going to get injured and blow out your back. How do you? How, what? I just did the worst snatch you've ever seen. How do you break it to me? Well, I hey, would buddy, say, you know, <laughs> hey man, listen. <laughs> I would say the compliment sandwich. Yeah, I mean, I, right. you're doing good. You're working hard. <laughs> you fucking suck, but you're gonna get better. Yeah, Mike. <laughs> Mike. That, Mike. That's let the me gist of it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the compliment sandwich. But you know, sometimes, sometimes you just gotta, you just gotta tell them, like, look, you're gonna hurt yourself. You know, um, 
you know, you're pulling with a rounded back. You know, I've I've actually <laughs> hurt myself before. I've actually hurt my back you you know, doing listen. a snatch. So well, listen, I like you. You dude. know, you're, you're you're a good guy. We, we both dig the same tunes and stuff. Listen, because I like it. Let me tell you something. Come on, lean in close. Yeah. <laughs> you, you fucking look so terrible. Right now. <laughs> I mean, really, I, I, my my balls. I try to do it. I try to do it a little bit lift. more. You're embarrassing the shit out of everybody here, and your parents. They work so hard to raise you, and look at you. What in the fuck are you yeah. doing? But listen, listen. But all that shit aside, homie, we're gonna work this out. Right? We're gonna work on our position. Back of warm up, homie. You know, it's all gonna get good. You're gonna be great. Trust me. That's, I mean, that's like that's, that's a compliment subway sandwich. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, pretty much just that, except you know, try to be a little bit, try to be a little nicer. But you know, okay, yeah. I'll work on that too. With my coaching. All right. Uh, All right, uh, real quick, the, the compliment sandwich is actually a good coaching tool. And actually, it's a good life tool. I think Doug actually taught it to me. He learned it from I don't know where. I think Tim Ferriss was the the guy who who brought that to my attention in the four hour work week. Yeah, years Doug, and years Doug, ago. What, what exactly is the compliment sandwich? You basically just tell someone they're doing a good job, just like Chris suggested, and then you say, "Okay, now here's your critical feedback." And then you go, but you're still doing a great job, and, and you you, you, know, it's, you do compliment, yeah. Yeah. then suggestion, and then compliment. So you're sandwiching I, that I, suggestion I that in between also, positive feedback. It's also a debating technique where yeah. if you just answer somebody, say, look, that's why this is why this is wrong. The audience gets tense. The guy is going to automatically start rejecting what you're saying. So you say, look, I agree with these things for those reasons. That's good stuff. Now let me say where I don't agree. Now let me make a joke that makes us all laugh. And then they accept what you have to say. That's how you actually right. communicate with people. Right. Yeah. All right, now people know how to negotiate better. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, this is a negotiation. It's supposed to be about weightlifting. It is. Tell somebody, tell somebody how, hey, to, how to get better is a communi- negotiation. Communicating with athletes, man. It's, that's, that's what it's all about. Mm. <laughs> right Good. on, dude. We can, go, we can go on forever. We probably should wrap this up. <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, yeah, we are going to stop podcasting now, and we are going to plug things. Alex want to talk about something. <laughs> Shameless plug. Now's the time. Uh, all right. Uh, do it. Do it. <laughs> all right. So uh, we're going to have uh, the Barbell Shrug Weightlifting Championships October 26th through the 27th at Faction Strength and Conditioning here in Memphis, Tennessee. So CTP's providing the title belt for the winner. Uh, CTP's got a title belt. Is that true? Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Dude, well, we, should you, make a, we should make a something that goes on top that's custom like over, over it's the gonna be It's going to be epic, guys. Yeah. If you're in the muscle game challenge, you get a free entry. So there's unless you live halfway around the globe, there's no reason why you shouldn't try to come come on down here and, and lift. Um, we're planning to be a great time. Yeah, we're yeah. planning. We're, we have some big plans, you know, in the making. So it's gonna be good. And I mean, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a USAW sanctioned meet. It's right before. Uh, the American Open. I think the American Open is in December. It's, it's far enough out from yeah. the American Open. I think it's about seven weeks, yeah. which is going to allow you to qualify for the American Open without right. it being so close that right. you know you you're not going to be able to peak again. I guess right. You could say. And if you never, I mean, if you've never done a weightlifting meet, I mean, a good a good chance to do it is just go to a, a local place and and do one. It's, you know, it's not as you know, tense, you know, just have come fun, and have man. fun. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're going to have a good it'll, it'll time. Be very casual. Yeah. We're going yeah. to try and make this one of the, the better meets that you could ever go to. And we're going to party harder after too, right? And we're going to have, we're gonna have a great time. It's not going to be just competing. We're going to be doing some hanging out. Festivities. Yeah, if yeah. you're just a fan of the show, even if you're not going to compete in the meet and you live close enough to Memphis where you want to make a trip and just come hang out, just come, come, on, come watch we'll, the meet. We'll sure. podcast. You know, hang out with us. And we have special friends coming. We'll, we'll go out drinking. Are there special friends coming? We're working on special friends. <laughs> okay. It'll be, uh, we're yeah. working on we're guest work- appearances yeah. from uh, some, okay. some notable figures. Notable yeah. figures in the community of ours. That's what we're going to do. And we're probably going to be drinking tequila in some form and eating charred meat and bullshit and podcast. I mean, come on, dude. Come on down. We should probably get Bedrock Eats and Sweets to uh, come Absolutely. out and provide the food. Epic. It's already epic. It's oh, a great yeah, idea. I heard she was sponsoring the meat. Oh, I'm just making that up. I'm gonna yeah, put her on get, the spot. Come we can on, definitely baby. put a. Get, She'll do it. She'll get, do it. We can get uh get nourished. You know, get some get some muffins for breakfast. You know, right. you try those muffins, homie. Yeah. What they yeah. delicious. That's good post workout right yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, last last weekend in October, y'all come on down. Come on down. All right, guys. See you next no, time. What, dude, you anybody want? else want to plug shit? You, no. You, you no, brain no, asshole. No. What happened? You to sign up for the newsletter piece. Oh yeah. All right. So guys. <laughs> Don't forget to sign up for the newsletter at barbellstruck.com. Bye. Five stars. Bye. 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 I'll, let, I'll, let, I'll let Chris. They're going to let me plug. I'm going to let you plug something. I, I'm so fortunate. <laughs> a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of trick closes on this episode. Yeah, it's a tricky episode. Oh, barbellblue.com. Check out the podcast. I think you'll really like it. Barbellblue in your iTunes and 
be entertained. I think you'll get a kick out of it. Check and if you're out. a CrossFit coach, go to barbellbusiness.com. We got our business podcast yep. out now. Oh, yeah. Which has been yeah. doing really well. I forgot about that. It was, kind yeah. of like a, it was only like top three in the business category the other day, whatever. Yeah. It climbed the ranks really you might, fast. You might even say that if you're not on all of our bandwagons and you're not observing the growing empire, you're just fucking out. You, you got to get with it. We're, we're taking over the whole show. Everything. The whole world. We have fucking barbell shopping centers. <laughs> <laughs> barbell fucking restaurants. I don't know. Shit. Who, who, who's to put limits on this thing? This guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Rob's like, how do we pay for that exactly? <laughs> All right, guys. See All you right. next time. Thanks, guys. All right.